Hi, I'm Peter Hart. Welcome back to FAIR TV. Newspapers report news. That's the way it's supposed to work. Except when newspapers decide not to report certain facts because the government doesn't want them to. That much was revealed on February 6th when the Washington Post told readers something it's known for two years. The CIA has a drone base in Saudi Arabia. Why did the Post keep quiet? At the request of the White House, which said that reporting this fact would undermine operations against an Al-Qaeda affiliate regarded as the network's most potent threat to the United States, as well as potentially damage counterterrorism collaboration with Saudi Arabia. But get the Post's explanation for why they finally reported the news. The Post learned Tuesday night that another news organization was planning to reveal the location of the base, effectively ending an informal arrangement among several news organizations that had been aware of the location for more than a year. That other news organization seems to have been the New York Times, which mentioned the Saudi base in a February 5th report. And that paper's managing editor explained that they kept the news quiet because the Saudis might shut it down because the citizenry would be very upset. Now, it is possible that Saudi Arabia would stop allowing the CIA to use its territory to conduct a secret drone war against a third country. But the possibility that news might affect the world is not a reason to stop doing journalism. You might say it's the best reason to do journalism. When another country carries out an airstrike, the government usually tells reporters what they attacked. Obviously, that doesn't mean that what the government is saying is true. But the January 30th reports that Israel carried out an airstrike on Syrian targets near Damascus took Israel's claims at face value. As the story went, Israel attacked because it saw Syrian SA-17 anti-aircraft weapons heading toward Lebanon, where they were to be used by the militant group Hezbollah. On NBC Nightly News, correspondent Richard Engel came up with a novel interpretation of journalistic confirmation. What we've been able to confirm is that an Israeli airstrike took place and that it attacked a convoy, probably stationary just north of, of Damascus. It was packed with fairly sophisticated Russian anti-aircraft missiles, and that those missiles were on their way to Lebanon. They were going to be handed over to Hezbollah. Now, when Engel says he can confirm this, he means he's repeating what the government has told him, which is obviously not the same as something that you can confirm. He wasn't the only one doing this, of course. On the PBS NewsHour, Margaret Warner made the same point and added that she heard that Hezbollah already had the weapons in hand, leaving host Gwen Ifill to comment that a U.S. official has confirmed this for you. It's worth remembering, of course, that U.S. officials confirm all sorts of things, some of which turn out not to be true. And finally, on January 27th, 60 Minutes correspondent Steve Croft got an amazing exclusive, a sit-down interview with Barack Obama and outgoing Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. At the top of the segment, Croft declared that the 30 minutes he was allotted to do the interview was barely enough time to discuss the important issues of the day. Actually, a half hour is a lot of time. The problem was that Croft didn't seem to be interested in asking any of those questions. Here's what he asked instead. Has she had much influence well, in I... this administration? How would you characterize your relationship right now? And he also asked them a not-so-probing question about their political rivalry from the 2008 campaign. You said the staff took a little longer to, to forget the campaign stuff. What about the spouses? Well, Is that an impertinent <laughs> question? Now, they did broach foreign policy a bit. Croft asked them to name their biggest foreign policy success. The issue of Syria came up. That was an opportunity to echo right-wing criticism that the White House hasn't done enough to intervene militarily in that war. 60 Minutes enjoys a reputation as the gold standard in TV journalism. This was something else. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.